Hi everyone, welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about vSphere 8 clusters overview and what are the vCenter 8 clusters key features and how to add ESXi 8.0 host to the vCenter 8.0 cluster. And finally, what are the vCenter cluster use cases in specifically in vCenter 8.0? Okay, so now let's start with the first point. And if you see the cluster icon, it's like a, this is a cluster icon and this is a new icon for the VMware vSphere 8. And within the vSphere cluster overview, let's try to understand the cluster first. So cluster means if you see this icon, it's like a server or ESXi host icon. We have a three host combined here. So the cluster definition also same. Grouping of multiple ESXi host is nothing but a cluster, okay, in simple terms. And when you create a cluster in vCenter server, we can just log into the vCenter and select the data center, right click and create new cluster. So while creation of new cluster, you can see the icons in this screenshot. We have a three clusters here. And the naming convention and all depends on our environment and also the main business use cases. Let's say we have three clusters here. One cluster name management cluster 01, another cluster production cluster 01, and test and development cluster 01. We given as a 01 is the number. Suppose in future, if you want to have create one more management cluster, we can start like a management cluster 02 and so on. Okay, so the definition from VMware is a cluster is used in vSphere to shared physical resources between a group of ESXi host. Suppose in the right side diagram, if you see here management cluster, it's have a available CPU, available memory and available storage. This all the resources are coming from the shared physical resource. How many hosts we added? The specific ESXi host resources added under the cluster. Okay, that meaning only they're explaining in the first line. And the second line, vCenter server manages cluster resources as a single pool of resources, okay? And within the one, once we add the host to the cluster, all the host resources become as a cluster pool, okay? And we can create one or more clusters based on the purpose each cluster must fulfill. So in, even in this diagram, if you see, we have a three clusters. So minimally we can create one cluster or we can create more than one clusters. So example I given as management cluster, production cluster and test and development clusters. Okay, so now let's talk about what are the vCenter 8 cluster key features. So within the vCenter 8 cluster key features, when we are creating a vCenter server, as we know cluster is grouping of multiple ESXi host. So while creation of new cluster, we can see these three features, vSphere DRS, vSphere HA and virtual SAN. And cluster name, you can keep any name for our easy understanding. I mentioned as GNAN Cloud Garage CL cluster. Suppose let's quickly log into our lab system. Let's say Within our vCenter server, we have one data center and running with three ESXi hosts. If you want to create a cluster, right click the data center and choose new cluster. So when creating of new cluster, we can see default cluster features here. Let's say our cluster name is, you can mention as any name, let's say for our easy understanding, cluster 01, because it's a lab system. So I just mention as cluster 01. But in the production environment, we should give you a specific name. Okay, based on our organization naming convention structure. Okay, and the cluster features vSphere DRS, vSphere HA, and vSAN. These three are the main key features. And even if I click on information icon, we can see vSphere DRS. Once we enable the automation level is fully automated. And vSphere HA also, it will help you to enable the host monitoring, admission control, and VM monitoring. But only thing is we can just enable the vSphere DRS and vSphere HA and click on next. But normally, if you want to enable DRS and HA, minimally, we should have a two years success host. Even for virtual SAN also, VMware recently announced even we can configure virtual SAN with two node ESXi with 
two ESXi hosts we can configure vSAN cluster. But recommendation is minimally three nodes for all these three features if you want to enable. Even our lab system, we have three ESXi hosts, so we are good to enable these three features. But for the time being, without this enabling these three features, I'm just clicking on next. And even if you see the below, we have the another feature, manage all hosts in the cluster with a single image. So cluster responsibility is all our ESXi hosts must run with the same ESXi 8.0 with this equivalent build version. Okay, so we can compose the image from here or you can use vRealize Lifecycle Manager to maintain all ESXi hosts, make sure all in a same version of ESXi 8.0 with the same build version. Okay, so I'm just selecting the default and see vendor edition. Suppose our vendor edition currently our server is running as Synergy Frame. So let's select as HP Synergy. If you have any other vendor servers, you can select the respective vendor name. Click on next and see we can select the review is cluster name and it is creating under data center and the currently all the cluster features we currently keep it as disabled because we haven't added any ESXi host to cluster. OK, so now click on finish. So cluster creation is pretty simple. So in the recent task, within a few seconds, it will create a creation of cluster job and we can see the cluster icon here. Okay, it's already refreshing. Cluster is created. Once I expand here, we can see cluster 01 is created. But when you go to the summary, cluster total CPU memory, all the information, CPU memory, storage details, capacity is showing as zero. The reason is there is no ESXi host. So if you want to add the host to the cluster, the only option is just to drag and drop it here. OK, so we can just drag and drop. That is how we can add or else right click here, add host. While adding the host, we need to enter the host name, username and password. That is the alternative method. So I'm just we already have existing host. Suppose if you do not have host added to vCenter, you can just right click the cluster, add host and we can add multiple hosts here. OK, username and password, the same procedure. So let me cancel here. We already have existing host. Drag and drop it in the cluster. And same way, when you drag and drop one host, see the resources are added to the cluster. OK, and same way, second host also drag and drop it here. OK, and similarly, the first host also, we can drag and drop it to the cluster. So once we drag and drop, it will start adding the cluster resources. See if you see in the recent task, move the host into cluster 01 is completed. So adding may take a while. Let me refresh the screen. See if I expand the cluster now, within the cluster, we have the all these three SXA hosts are running. See, host are three under cluster resources. This point only we highlighted in our notes earlier. OK, so now let's back to the slide and let's understand the same point. So the notes also same point what we discussed. When we create a cluster, we can enable one or more cluster features. So one feature is vSphere DRS. DRS means distributed resource scheduler and specifically for VM placement and load balancing. OK, and vSphere HA, HA full form is high availability. It's specifically for high availability, that means continuous availability for our virtual mission. That means, suppose if I log into our lab system, if I enable these features currently, if you see DRS is in turn off state, even vSphere HA also in a turn off state. If I enable the DRS feature, just click on edit and turn on. When you turn on the DRS, what the purpose of DRS is, it is a load balancing technique. That means whenever ESXi host one is overloaded, some of the virtual machine, minimally one or two virtual machine, will automatically migrate it to another ESX host. Suppose ESX2 is overloaded. It will migrate the VMs to another host, either 41 or 43, wherever the resources are available. OK, but in our lab system, there is no much virtual machines here. But in the production environment, that is the functionality of DRS. It will take care, automatically take care of the load balancing. So just turn on, click on edit. And if you want to turn on, enable this button and default, you can keep it as fully automatic and click on OK. OK, 
and if you interested to know the drs in depth concept i discussed earlier you can refer from our youtube channel go to the vsps 7 playlist and i explained in detail each and every step of drs okay and another feature if you want to enable the vspa ha ha means it provides a continuous availability for virtual machines suppose any of the esxi host is down there will be no impact to the virtual machine these virtual machines will automatically migrate and restarted on another esxi host using ha feature okay so similar like in our windows we have a microsoft clustering services cluster also provides a high availability and load balancing same way here also in vcenter cluster also we have a load balancing mechanism is drs and high availability feature we call it as vspr ha so currently it is in turn off state if you want to enable click on edit and turn on the vspr ha and all these features and all i explained in the previous sessions within the vspr 7 class so you can just go through the vspr 7 playlist to in detail information of vspr ha okay here i'm just explaining you the high level overview so now within our cluster, we managed to add three SXI hosts and we also added a cluster features HA and DRS. But virtual SAN, we are not going to add because if you want to enable virtual SAN, we must have a additional hard drives within our ESXi host. Currently, we do not have any additional hard drive in our ESXi host. That's the reason I'm not enabling virtual SAN. But in our vCenters level, we already configured a shared storage using Nimble. So one, even if you want to enable HE and DRS, a recommendation from VMware is we should have a shared storage. Okay. So hope you understand these points. So DRS enabled, HE enabled, and vSAN specifically for shared storage. Instead of vSAN, we are already using a Nimble storage. And even in the organizations also, depends on the customer requirement. Either we can choose virtual SAN or we can choose a, any of the shared storage devices. Example is HPE Nimble okay and we can also manage host updates using images even earlier while creation of cluster we can see the image image means it's like a esxi iso so normally while downloading the esxi iso if your hardware is hpe hardware better to download the hpe custom iso that is called images and make sure all your esx hosts must run with a same build version for example if i select the esxi host go to the summary tab we can see the build version is 205 ends with 097 all our esxi host must runs with the same version and also the build version in case if anything is there is a mismatch even in our vcenter server we have a, another feature called vspr lifecycle manager it will help us we can update all hosts in the cluster collectively using specified esxi image which is the latest to build version okay so hope you clear about the vspr 8 cluster features now i am going to talk about how to add ESXi host to vCenter also, we completed. I just shown you while explaining the cluster features, I help you to add the ESXi host to vCenter. Now, another point is, what are the cluster use cases in vCenter 8.0? So cluster use cases is nothing but here. Now in our lab, we just created one cluster because we have only three hosts. Suppose you have a hundreds of ESXi hosts, normally in the organization, if you have 100 hosts, we cannot add 100 hosts in here within your cluster. Reason is, vCenter 8.0, maximum we can add 96 ESXi hosts. And earlier versions, we have a maximum limit of 64 ESXi hosts. Even, even though we have a 96 host limit also, we cannot add all 96 dedicated for one cluster because it depends on our office workloads and production workloads. We can segregate into a multiple clusters. For example, few few nodes we can divide it for a, suppose we have a 100 ESXi hosts, we can divide 25 ESX hosts for a test environment and 25 ESX hosts for development environment and the remaining 50 ESX hosts we can dedicate for a production. I just given a simple example. Similarly, even in the uh, every customers have a different environment, different count of ESX hosts based on the organization requirement and environment size, infrastructure size, we can create a specific clusters. So um, we make have a option to create a number of clusters like cluster 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. But numbering I given for easy understanding, but some organization they may have a, some standard naming conventions. Those are the considered as a use cases. So now let me explain the use case scenarios. 
let's say one use case is management cluster that means in this management cluster we can configure all the infrastructure vms like active directory dns dhcp file server any of the servers we can configure under the management cluster even vcenter also consider as a management vm we can create man vcenter vm also under the management cluster okay and all our production workloads like whatever the customer business related application wherever it is running either it is running on virtual machine or it is on any container host all those are considered under the we can configure under the workload cluster okay this is the two types of naming conventions and some may configure the different naming instead of management workload they may use different naming convention like test and development cluster and the numbering we can give depends on our requirement let's say test and dev cluster 01 test and dev cluster 02 and so on and another naming cluster name is production cluster and another use case is witness cluster witness cluster means suppose if you want to configure a virtual sun any environment within our virtual sun normally we have a two sides if you want to configure a virtual sun stretched cluster during that scenario we need a three sides two sides have a stretch cluster and our third side is considered as a witness cluster okay and another scenario is dr cluster disaster recovery cluster let's say within our production environment we have a test and dev production you want to dedicate a dr test exercise for dr test exercise we can configure a dr cluster and stretch cluster even within our vsan environment we can configure the stretch cluster stretch cluster also we can configure the storage is stretched from site a to site b okay and non-stretched cluster that means the specific cluster is not in the stretched environment suppose in your environment you are using a stretch cluster to segregate the naming convention we may use non-stretch name also in between the cluster names okay and web cluster that means this cluster we are dedicating for a all web servers and another cluster name is db cluster or we call it as dbl or dbo cluster dbl means database sql in our short form l dbo means database oracle so all oracle servers you can configure one dbo cluster all sql servers you can configure a dbl cluster either you can segregate separately or you can keep it as a one cluster and application cluster all our application vms we can configure under the application cluster and another cluster name is db cluster db cluster means database cluster suppose if you have any third party database like instead of sql and oracle if you have any other third party databases like mongodb and all you can configure as a db cluster even this db cluster if you want to dedicate it specifically for container applications all your container related dbs you can keep it on a one db dedicated db cluster and shared service cluster shared service cluster means any of the shared services for example sftp file server sms server monitoring server these are all considered as a shared service clusters and you can configure those vms under the shared service cluster and another use case is admin cluster even admin cluster management cluster have a same meaning but some may use management name and some may use admin cluster all your admin jump host and management related vms and all either you can use the name management cluster or you can use the name admin cluster and another use case scenario is edge cluster suppose if we have a network hypervisor or nsx products nsx v or nsxt that scenario all your nsx uh, nsx vms and also the load balancers edge dlrs under you can configure under edge cluster and other cluster means you can keep it as a any name i given around 15 use case scenarios but most of the organization they may use th this kind of names or they may use a different type of naming convention suppose if your organization using a different naming convention please explain in the comment below and based on my experience i given this 15 use case scenarios okay so that's it thank you if you're watching this video first time please do view like share and subscribe to the gnan cloud garage channel if you're already subscribed i appreciate all your support bye for now